This is my compound bow, and I'm going to try and use technology and physics to modify it to be the world's most accurate bow. <laughs> that didn't happen. Yeah, this video kind of took a shit because of the weather. Just because I really wanted to be able to stretch my legs and shoot this thing far to test it. Can't do that unless I'm shooting outside. I'll explain later. So yeah, you'll see my happy ass chiming in periodically for more context throughout this video. Enjoy! First of all, what is a stabilizer? A stabilizer is a long rod that extends out from the riser of the bow. It works by putting weight out away from the axis of rotation, which in this case is my hand holding the bow. And that makes the bow more resistant to rotation because of the conservation of angular momentum. Angular momentum is determined by an object's mass, velocity, and how far the mass extends away from the point of rotation. The nearer the mass to its access point, the greater the velocity. Or in other words, the longer the stabilizer is, the more effective it is. So John, if a longer stabilizer is more effective and you're trying to make the world's most accurate bow, why not make a 100 foot long stabilizer? Shut up. Bit stabilizer can only be so long because eventually the weight of the rod becomes too great and you can't hold your bow up. Stabilizers for target archers typically top out between 28 and 34 inches. So how do I get around this? By using one of these, a gyroscope. A lot of you have probably seen or played with one of these before. Gyroscopes essentially consist of a spinning mass that rotates around its axis. In particular, when the mass is rotating on its axis, it tends to remain parallel to itself and oppose any attempt to change its orientation. Or at least that's the definition assigned in this paper that I found in the National Library of Medicine. So by putting a flywheel at the end of my stabilizer, I'm hoping to see more stability than a longer stabilizer in a shorter and lighter package. Enough nerd shit, let's put it together. So my initial idea for this was to use a flywheel, mount that to a bearing, and then use a ripcord that I could pull, bring the flywheel up to speed, and take the shot. The only issue with that is I was going to need to get a bearing. And uh, I think I know where I can find a bearing. Alright, I've got everything put together, and here's the final result. I've got this spool-like section right here that'll gather a string, so when I pull that, it'll cause the flywheel to start spinning. Let's give it a test. Okay, let's see how she does. Well, my bearing exploded. And here's everything I could find of it. Three of the seven balls, the cage that kept them closed, the outer race which is still attached to the flywheel, and the inner race which is still attached to the end of the stabilizer. Who would have thought the fidget spinner bearing couldn't keep up? So, I blew up the bearing, <laughs> but I had a plan B, which was to use an electric motor, because then I could actually control the flywheel with the switch. So, here's how that went. Okay, Mark III flywheel with a 9 volt battery instead of the AA battery pack. That's what I'm looking for. That is way better. So the third version of that flying wheel worked way better coupled with a 9 volt battery instead of the AA battery pack that I was using for the other tests. So after that, I just threw in a quick little 3D printed housing, slapped that on the end of my stabilizer, and took it out to the local archery range. But this is the first actual test, so we will see. <laughs> it's very weird. It makes a very weird noise when I shoot. <laughs> Mm. 
Not great. Dropped one left, dropped one right. And that's it. That's all the footage I have from the archery range. Because the flywheel stopped working because batteries don't like the cold and it was about 20 degrees when we were out shooting. So that kind of kills the whole motor concept, at least for the next few months until it warms up. Yeah. So I'm currently editing this video and it felt like it needed a better conclusion because I just don't have the footage to do it justice. To surmise, yeah, I killed it. There, I didn't kill it. The cold killed it. The motor, the battery just does not want to run outside right now and it's not going to be warmer for at least another month. So I'm definitely going to have to revisit this project. Here it is. She works, she works fine in my house. I just can't responsibly let an arrow go in here. Um, I do have a lot of things I want to try. I want to try making the flywheel out of metal, see if I can get a machinist friend of mine to just make me a little disc. I want to try a faster motor. I want to experiment with down angles. I already, I've since got a 10 degree down for this, which will make the stabilizer come out at an angle instead of straight. A lot of competitive archers will play with those down angles because it changes the way your pins float when you're on target. I want to know what kind of effect that has. I want to know what kind of effect a back bar would have, an additional stabilizer running off the side. That's another thing competitive archers use. There's a lot of things I want to play with. I'm not done with this idea yet. But for now, this is a, this is what I've got, at least for the Mark I. Also, this is not the last project I have in mind that uses gyroscopes, so be on the lookout for that. Anyway, thanks for watching. No, I'm fine. Okay. My fucking bra straps are falling down though. Should I just freed the titties? I'm keeping that in there. <laughs> Keep I'm putting that fucking in. bloopers. <laughs> Motherfucker.